Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be doing a video on a new filter that's been developed by Altair Astro and that is their Tri RGB filter which is a two inch filter mainly for one shot colour cameras and for broadband targets but it's actually quite a versatile filter so I'll go into the details of that in the video. This weekend though is an exciting day on the annual calendar it's the Practical Astronomy Show, which is hosted by Altair Astro. There'll be loads of other great vendors there showing what equipment they've got and any developments they've come up with. And Altair will be there with their normal huge stand of loads of equipment and, of course, excellent prices. So at the show, they always give that little bit extra discount. And I know that this new filter will be there. So if you want to grab one at a good price, the show's a good place to be going to. So I can't wait to get there and meet all my old familiar friends and uh, it'd be really nice to meet some new people too. So if you're there and you see me, come and say hi, it'd be really nice to meet you. So uh, without any more delay, let's uh, look at this filter by Altair Astro and hopefully I'll see you at the show. My name's Glenn and you're watching Astro Bloke. Hi, last year Altair Astro were working on a new filter, their Tri RGB filter, which is in here. It's their two inch filter, um, mainly for one shot color, broadband targets, but it's actually quite a versatile filter. Um, I was actually aiming a scope at narrowband targets with this filter in and a one shot color camera. And I was quite uh, impressed by how much information it allowed back. So the emission lines on this filter not only let through the uh, RGB, but will also uh, allow for HA, O3, uh, S2 and nitrogen capture too. So you're really getting a lot of excellent uh, data through this filter, but it cuts out the light pollution really well. So in a light polluted area, it would be a really good choice. Now, I'm very lucky, I live in a Bortle 4. If anything, it's a little bit lower. Um, and it, but even there, it's a brilliant filter. It really does enhance the colors. And it's really good for star color too, letting through those RGB stars. One other use with it, uh, which I've heard people have done, is they've used it on their mono cameras too. Um, and it's given them a really good clean luminance uh, channel. So there's many uses for this filter and I also know that it works really well contrasting with planetary work. Now that's not an area I'm really experienced in, um, however I didn't that long ago purchase a Mead 8 inch SCT. I've got a 533 one shot colour camera and I am planning uh, to get onto some planets and have a look and apparently this filter is excellent for that too So I will be trying it out and I'll, of course will share the results with you So one of the images I took early on with the first version of this filter was The Seder region and I'll show you it here and as you can see there's lots of lovely HA information there and some O3 and I thought this was a really nice image. Uh, this was taken on a 70 millimeter EDQ scope, which Altair supplied, um, and the 533 uh, one-shot color camera. Um, as I say, lots of really nice detail and information came through with that. However, we did notice uh, when on some other images that there's some haloing, quite strong haloing on the stars and Altair were not happy with this at all. So what they did was they went away, worked on the coatings on this uh, filter and then sent me a revised version to test and I can manage, was able to manage to compare the two filters. So there's a quick image here um of uh the horsehead nebula with obviously our attack we've got a very bright star there and if you look closely you can see there's a very hard halo on version one but on version two that is almost gone so um they've done an excellent job in helping to control those halos which i know can be a bit of a 
a plague for all of us when we're using filters on extremely bright stars. I then swung my CT10 across to Polaris and thought I'd give it a real good test and directly pointed at it. Please ignore the large halo, which is basically an internal reflection from a 10 inch Newtonian pointing directly at a bright star. But if you look at the star itself, again, you can see that hard halo on the first version and no or hardly any halo on the second. So Altair have worked really hard on this filter and I uh, plan to do some really nice projects with it. However, like yourselves, I am sure the weather this year and even at the end of last year has been terrible for astrophotography. It's been so difficult to get out. And unfortunately for me, when there were some clear opportunities, other things were causing me problems to get out and about. So I've really missed out on a lot of opportunities to get data, but I hope to catch up soon. So with that in mind, uh, I reached out to the Altair Astro community and Andy Booth uh, is a great astrophotographer and has got some lovely images and has used the Tri-RGB filter quite a bit and has had some fantastic results. And he gave me permission to share some of his images, so please take a look. So one of the first images here is the Horsehead Nebula. He's taken a fantastic image here, and I think, as you can see, all of the bright parts of this image, like the Owl Attack, are completely controlled. So the RGB filter has let through some fantastic data without blowing out the stars or producing massive halos. The next image I want to show you is one of uh, the Orion Nebula, which Andy has taken with this uh, filter. And again, you can see it lets through lots and lots of fine detail, which is really good. And lastly, here's an image of the Rosette Nebula, which Andy took, and he tried here to produce the Forax uh, palette, uh, even though he doesn't use Pixinsight. And I think he's done an absolutely fantastic uh, job at this. The colours are really true to that palette. Um, but what really strikes me about this image is just how fine and detailed uh, the image is, how much he's got out of this. And I think um, it really does show how good this filter is. When I asked Andy what he thought of the Tri-RGB, he said it was a game changer for him. Whereas before, when he was uh, capturing data on Nebula, he would be using a dual narrowband filter and he'd make like a luminance channel. He said that um, it was taking him quite a long time to capture the data. And with the weather being as it is um, recently, it was quite a long time for him to get enough data together to get a good image. Um, and what he found with the Tri-RGB, with the amount of information it was allowing through and the extra contrast, was he was able to co produce the same kind of image in about half the time. So that was really assisting him a lot with the poor weather conditions we've had lately. And of course, it's always nice to be able to gather the same amount of data in less time. This is something that, you know, helps us all because if we still have the same amount of time, we can get double the data than we would have got. So it's a win-win, really. I know that he's really pleased with it. And I must say, the uses I've had with the filter, I've been really pleased with it too. If you go on the Altair Astro Facebook page, you can see some images from Andy on there. And it's worth having a look. And don't forget to give him a little like, because that's always a nice thing to get some appreciation for the work that you've done. So the filter is a two inch uh, variant and is available directly from Altair Astro for £169 all in. As I say at the show, you might be able to get it a little bit less. If you're from the USA or Canada, and obviously you can't make the UK show, you can go online and buy this filter directly from Land, Sea and Air or Astro World, and I'll put links to those websites in my description below for you to have a look. So here is a chart showing the transmission lines of the filter, and what they've done here is got all the important areas covered, and where it's not so narrow, 
what this means is that uh, you can use this filter on uh, very fast scopes too. And I do believe it has been tested on things as fast as a Rasa. Um, because you've not got that very tight band pass, uh, the filter shift isn't really going to be an issue. And so it works extremely well on pretty much any scope you want to use it on. So to summarise, I really like the filter. And I think if the, you're in the market for a filter of this kind, this is a very, very good option to look at. Altair have been working extremely hard on their filters lately. Um, and they've been bringing out some three nanometer uh, narrowband filters. I know that they're working on a set of LRGB filters, which will be great too for those mono users out there. And um, they've got out some, some a, a whole range of new filters with some two nanometer solar filters as well. So well worth having a look at their stand or even on their website because they have a really good uh, selection and, and I know that they're gonna be developing more as they go. So well worth keeping an eye out for that. Okay, so that's enough from me now. That's the new Altair Astro Tri RGB filter. Well worth a look. I'm gonna leave you again with some images from Andy uh, because I do think they're really nice. And hopefully I will see you at the Practical Astronomy Show. And if not, maybe at another date. But until next time, please take care. And of course, let's hope for some clear skies.